Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review slash showcase. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Loyal Subjects Best Action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Krang comic book and figure set. And man, look at this. This is a dope box, man. I love the way this looks. Huge shout out to Loyal Subjects for sending this out to me. It's very nice of them that they sent this out to me because honestly... Before the Ninja Turtles that came out at this last year's Comic-Con, I was not a fan of Loyal Subjects. But I got those figures, I reviewed them, I enjoyed them, and now I'm kind of looking out for what they're doing. And this Krang figure is like the next one that really caught my attention. I think this looks pretty badass, so I'm excited to talk about it. But let's go ahead and get right into it, starting off with the packaging. I love the way this box looks. I love the artwork right here. It's got a very unique style. It says Krang on the top. And then we see some really cool artwork of him right on the front. Down here it says Comic book action figure best action loyal subjects idw all that good stuff and then you could open the front of this and that's where you could see the figure looking pretty freaking crazy and then over here we get all the details as to like what comes in the box and <laughs> there's a lot going on here lots of articulation lots of accessories and a comic book i'm so excited about that it looks like it's going to be a best of kang type of comic book so that is super cool and then oh look at that it's like a tentacle on the side <laughs> or his arm whatever you want to call it and then on the back we get some more information about this and i love this man i like the style right here how it kind of looks like comic book like caption boxes there we get a cool look at the figure all posed up and then some accessories that he comes with so yeah this is looking really really dope i like this package a lot man i'm probably gonna <laughs> find a way to to display this i think it looks super cool but enough about the pretty box let's go ahead and get this thing out and take a look Alrighty, so here we have krang right out of the box and man i've got to say i think this guy turned out pretty damn awesome check it out this is a really good looking figure it's got a lot of really nice sculpting work on it. It's all very detailed and looks good. It has some good paint work too. It doesn't have a whole lot of washes or anything like that, but everything is the color that it should be. And everything is very crisp and clean, you know? There's no like colors of one thing leaking onto another thing or anything like that. Everything is very crisp and looks really nice. And I really appreciate Loyal Subjects' approach to some of the more unique elements of Krang's design, like the torso. I love what they did here. So... You know, when you want to remove Krang, the upper torso is on a hinge, and it just kind of hinges back. And, you know, that's it. It's very simple and very easy. On the NECA animated Krang, as much as I like that figure, I wasn't crazy about how they did the upper torso. It's very hard to, you know, take that thing off and get Krang out of there. But with this, it's super easy. It just hinges back, and, you know, easy money. And then you could take Krang out, and there he is. But one thing I do dislike about the whole Krang setup is that you see how he has little arms in there using the controls? Those arms are not removable. Krang does come with another set of arms, so you could use, you know, Krang himself independently from the the Android bodysuit. But if you want to if you want to use this without Krang, it's going to be tough because you're going to have his arms in there. So you're going to have to do something about that. And yeah, they're they're definitely glued in there. Can't remove them unless they're like Unless it's like a weird angled hinge or something, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing I wish were I, I wish was a little different. Like they should have made it to where those arms are removable. But I do love the way they have the upper body on a hinge, so you could just flip that back and get the uh, crane head in and out of there. Boom, easy, easy money. So yeah, that is super dope. Uh, one thing I feel like Loyal Subjects needs to improve on is the way that they incorporate the articulation into the into the sculpt and everything and that's not really unique to krang that's the case with a lot of their figures uh, because in certain areas i feel like it's a little rough especially on the elbows and on the knees so check this out just standing there the elbows look fine but then when you use the elbow which is cool because it's a double joint but when you bend it it, it gets a little crazy look at that <laughs> that is uh that's a that's kind of ugly if i'm being honest with you I think uh, this is an area where they need to improve on. But with Krang, you know, you could kind of overlook it because he is a big old robot. So you can kind of, you could justify it in your mind for Krang. But that's something that, you know, that, that problem is a problem they have on a lot of their figures. So I don't know if you want to come up with excuses for every character they make. But <laughs> for Krang, you could kind of, you could kind of live with it. But yeah, man, aside from that, I think this is a really, really dope looking figure. And I think they kind of killed it, man. This is good. And I think they did a pretty great job with the sculpting work on Krang, starting off on his uh, bodysuit's head. 
<laughs> I guess that's how you'd say it. Uh, but yeah, this looks really good. You can see that there's some nice details on the side of the face here, but it kind of gets lost a little bit because there's not much paint wash to bring it out. So it kind of blends in, but you could see that they did some sculpting work on there. This is such a weird ass looking face. I love it. And then he does have his visor with the red lenses. That looks really good. And then on the top of his head, he does have his tuning fork. And I wonder if this is like a homage to Black Bolt, you know? I know how much the creators of Ninja Turtles love Jack Kirby. So maybe, I mean, is that a thing? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I think this is a great looking head sculpt. Then moving on to the body here, you can see that there's some more really great sculpting on here. And as I said, there's not a whole lot of paint wash, but you can see that the paint that's on here is really clean. Like, look at the silver on the, the uh, suspenders, I guess you would call them. None of it bleeds over into the skin area. So that looks good. And then we have some nice sculpting and paintwork on the shoulder. The yellow looks pretty clean there. Again, you know, you could see a bunch of detail in there, but no paint wash. I like how they made the joint, the joint silver. That's cool. And check out the details on the back. Ooh, he's got his spine. That looks weird. And a vent or something in case Crane gets hot. And then handlebars. I don't know. What part of the game is that? He's got handlebars right above his ass. I don't know what's up with that. But that's pretty good. Pretty uh, well done here. Good sculpting and stuff. Good paint work. Super clean. That's for sure. And then we have Krang right in there. Boom. And we'll take a closer look at him in just a minute. You know, paint wash and all that is really cool. But most importantly, you know... The priority is to make sure what's there is clean. And I think they did a really good job with everything here. I don't see any like sloppiness or anything. It's all very crisp and well done. Then moving on to the legs, you know, we have some sculpting work and, you know, more silver at the joints, some random little bits of silver, a bunch of weird lines running through his legs, and then his red shoes. So yeah, really nice sculpting work on this guy. Some decent paint. And I just think it's a really good looking figure. And then here's a look at Krang out of his suit. And he does come with an extra set of arms that you could plug in there when you take him out. But yeah, this looks pretty good. Check out the details on it. It's got a little bit of paint work. I like the yellow eyes and the mouth and stuff. And yeah, it's really well sculpted. And these arms have a little bit of articulation. There's a hinge on there. And then, you know, it could swivel inside of the socket there. But the hinge is nice. And both of them, both sides have it, you know. So yeah, pretty good stuff there. I think this is a really great looking Krang. <laughs> Definitely captures the vibe of the character. It's got that brain kind of look. Very cool. Yeah, they, they did a good job with this right here. And for accessories, Kane's suit does come with a bunch of really cool stuff, including two different sets of hands. So first off, we have a set of open hands, and then we have a pair of fists. And then he also comes with a bunch of these weapon attachments. And I like these quite a bit. First, we have a sword. And then we have this really cool looking drill bit. And then we have a double sided axe. Damn, he's going to chop some turtles in half. And then we have two guns. And all these things look really, really nice. I love the metallic blue color. And yeah, these are dope. I like these attachments a lot. And the comic that Krang comes with is basically like a Krang's greatest hits kind of thing, you know. It's a collection of four random issues that are Krang stories. And it's kind of cool because it takes comics from like different eras of Ninja Turtle comics and from different companies. There's actually some stuff from IDW in here and some stuff from Archie Comics. So that's pretty cool. And this is awesome, man. I think that every figure that comes out that's based on a comic book character should come with a comic book so that people can appreciate some more information about the figure and just get exposed to comic books, you know? It's crazy how many people just don't care about like comic book based characters and you know they collect things that are originally based on comics but you know it's like oh whatever I like this other version that has nothing to do with comics and you know they just kind of ignore their true origins but I just love the fact that Crane came with the comic and I feel like every figure should come with the comic book I can't wait to read this and you know what I hope that somebody makes some Crane figures based on the way that he looked in the IDW comics because when I was looking through this like, there was some Kang looks that I was unaware of. He looks, <laughs> he looked pretty badass in those books. 
much more like intimidating and more serious. I would love to get some action figures of those versions. Hopefully, Loyal Subjects or NECA or whoever can get to those versions eventually. All right, so now for some size comparisons. Here we have the Loyal Subjects Krang alongside the NECA animated series Krang. And then on the opposite side here, we have Krang in his little robotic suit. I'm not sure what this is called, but this is by NECA. I have seen the Loyal Subjects version of this, and I think it looks pretty good. So I might end up picking it up. And you know what? I think that NECA absolutely killed it on their android suit krang this thing looks like it jumped right out of the cartoon it's really well sculpted nice paint work amazing accessories and it's just a great looking figure but i will say it's not perfect i'm not a big fan of the way that the upper torso comes apart it's very difficult to deal with it's hard to get krang in and out of there and his legs are really loose this fool is always Falling over, knocking shit down, driving me crazy. I don't feel like I'm going to have that issue with the Loyal Subjects version. He's very sturdy. It doesn't feel like he's going to fall over. And I love the way that they handled the, the upper torso situation. It's very easy to get Krang in and out of there. I don't like how his arms are kind of fixed into place. That's kind of weak in my opinion. But as far as like the mechanism, it works very well. It's very easy to deal with. You just open it up, get Krang out, and it's simple. I really wish it was that simple on the NECA version, but unfortunately, that's not the case. But yeah, man, I'm kind of surprised at how much I like this Loyal Subjects version in comparison to the NECA one. I thought the NECA one was going to blow it away, to be honest with you, but man, it's pretty damn close. Obviously, they're based on different things, but they both execute the look they were going for pretty much equally, I would say. They, both companies did a great job on these Krang figures, and you know each of them have their strengths and weaknesses when compared to each other. One huge advantage that the NECA version has is that it does a better job of incorporating the joints into the sculpt. All the joints look way better on this version, especially when you're like moving them around. But when they're both just standing there, they both look just as good as each other, you know? Yeah, both companies killed it, really. And then moving on with the size comparisons, here we have them alongside the NECA animated series Shredder and the NECA animated series Baxter Stockman. And, you know, I like Krang to be much bigger than these characters. And even though he's not as big as the NECA one, I think his size works really well with these characters. I think this is okay. And then here we have him alongside the Loyal Subjects IDW Turtles. And obviously, you know, he's going to work much better with them than other brands. But yeah, I think this scales really well. And then here we have him alongside the NECA Mirage Comics Mikey the Wanderer and the NECA Mirage Comics Michelangelo. And I think that Krang looks good next to them too. Obviously, you know... He's not as big compared to them, but I still think that works. So it's kind of cool that this guy is pretty compatible with other brands and things like that. And then next up, we have him alongside the Furay or Fury or whatever, Spring. I can never remember the name of this damn awesome Leonardo figure, but there he is. On the opposite side, we have the SH Figure Arts Raphael. And then here we have him alongside the NECA Mirage Comics General Zog and the NECA Animated Series Turtles Pizza Monster. And then to get him in here with some more villains, here we have him alongside the NECA animated series Rocksteady and Bebop. And stepping away from Turtles before we finish up with the size comparisons, here we have Krang alongside the Super 7 Toxic Crusader and the Mattel Masterverse 40th Anniversary He-Man. And then next we have a Black Series Imperial Stormtrooper and the G.I. Joe Classified Firefly. And then finally, the most important size comparison, here we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and the Marvel Legends Renew Your Vows Spider-Man. And I don't think that anyone expects a Krang figure to have an excessive amount of articulation, but I will say, I think that Loyal Subjects did a pretty good job with the articulation on him. There's a few things in there that surprised me, and you know, with the design like Krang, you're just not going to get a whole lot. But I think that, for the most part, they did pretty much everything that you could on this guy, and maybe even just a little bit more. So, I'm pretty happy with what we have going on here, but let's go ahead and take a look starting off at the head. So the head is able to swivel side to side, it's got a little bit of tilt action. Can't really look up too much and can't look down too much. So not a whole lot going on here at the head. But, you know, obviously it's not his real head. So maybe it doesn't need to move all that much. <laughs> and then for the torso, you know, there's no ab crunch or waist, you know, ball joint or anything like that. He does have a swivel at the waist. So that's nice. But that's about it for the torso. And then for the arms, this is what caught me by surprise. He actually has butterfly joints. And they don't get, like you know, a bunch of range, but it's pretty good. Look at that. Goes forward and back a nice amount. Let's see if you could get his arms in front of him. Uh, not, not really, you know. So yeah, you've got butterfly joints. That'll work. And then he does have 
an upper bicep swivel, but it doesn't rotate all the way around because the shape of the shoulder. But I think you get, you know, about as much movement as you really need. So that's cool. And then he does have double jointed elbows like we mentioned before, but when you bend them all the way, it looks kind of crazy right there. <laughs> they do have good range though. And then he has a swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist as well. So good stuff there. And then for the legs, what do we have going on here? <laughs> he can't really kick his leg forward at all. It only goes to about right there. It goes back to about right there. He could kick to the side a pretty good amount. I don't think that Krang is going to be side kicking anyone, but there we go. And then he does have upper thigh swivel. I kind of wish that they just, you know, put more swivel into the actual upper hip joint instead of giving it a thigh swivel because it breaks up the sculpt and I think that they could have gotten what they needed just out of the ball joint in there if they just allowed a little bit more clearance but you know it's all good we've got an upper thigh swivel there and then double jointed knees but they don't bend as much as the elbows and they don't look great when they're bent right there either so you know the knees are okay but I wish like I wish it looked better or it got more range. One of the two. I guess it, I mean, it doesn't need more range. So I just wish it looked a little bit, a little better. But you know, when, when he's standing up, it looks fine. But when you bend it at all, it gets a little crazy. And then at the lower leg, we have a swivel. And it goes, it's pretty tight in here. There we go. It goes forward to right there, up to right there. And not really rocking ankles. It looks like the ankle just has a peg that goes down. And that's where we're getting the swivel. And then it just kind of hinges up and down on that peg. So it doesn't really have like a, yeah, it doesn't really have a rocking ankle. So I, I think they could have put that in there. That would have been nice. But uh, yeah, like I said, I think the articulation is pretty respectable considering that, you know, th th there's only so much you could put into a Krang figure. And I do wish that some of the joints looked better when you're using them, like the elbows and the knees. But, you know, like, <laughs> there you go. Can't even see it. So yeah, if you're taking pictures, you kind of just want to avoid those areas. But again, he's a big android. So even if even if this gets caught in a photo, it's like, whatever, it's a big robot. Who cares? Maybe maybe that's the way that Krang made him. But yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. I do wish that Lowell Subjects put some work into the way that they do their elbow joints. Uh, but aside from that, I'm pretty happy with the articulation on him. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done... This is a really cool figure. In fact, it was a bit of a pleasant surprise because I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do, but yeah, I think that Loyal Subjects actually killed it on this guy. I love the way it turned out. It looks great. It's really well sculpted. There's a whole lot of detail. The paintwork is nice too. There's not a whole lot of paint washes or anything, but the paint that's there is really clean and very well applied. There's no sloppiness. Everything looks really good and crisp. So that was very nice to see. As far as the accessories, he has a lot of really great stuff. Some weapons, some extra hands, some extra arms for Krang. So that is all really cool. I love the way that the open chest mechanism works. It's really easy to get Krang out of there. I do wish that the arms that are inside of the little compartment there were removable. That's definitely a flaw. But aside from that, I like how that whole setup works. I think Krang himself looks really good when you take him out and put those arms on him. It's a very good looking Krang figure by itself. And, you know, as far as articulation goes, there's not a whole lot going on, but I don't think anyone expects a super articulated Krang android bodysuit, you know? The articulation that's there, I think, works well for the character, and I'm happy with it. So, yeah, man, I think I like... This is definitely the best loyal subjects figure that I've ever played with. I like the turtles, the ones that came out, you know, for Comic-Con. Those were cool and everything. I think they did a great job with them. And those were the first time that I've ever seen them take a step in the right direction. This feels like another step in the right direction. Kind of a bigger step, to be honest with you. But, you know, they still have a lot of work to do, in my opinion, especially in regards to, like, making the articulation look good in the body. You know, for the most part, it seems like the articulation mostly functions pretty well, but when you start, like, posing the figures around, the articulation could look a little crazy, and that's definitely the case with Krang, but thankfully, because of the nature of the character, you could kind of get around it, but, you know, it's still a fact. When you bend the elbow, it looks crazy ugly <laughs> they definitely need to focus in on that and you know smooth things out make it look better and hopefully that's the next like evolution for them because you know if they do that 
they're going to be a pretty good line of figures, especially when it comes to their turtle stuff. And they cover like a bunch of different properties. So it would be nice to see them apply what they, you know, the advancements that we see in the turtle line to those other properties. And, you know, hopefully it's another company out there giving us a bunch of awesome action figures. Uh, but yeah, man, I've got to say, as far as this crane goes, I like it way more than I was expecting to. I think the loyal subjects did a really good job with it. And honestly, he's right up there with the NECA crane for me. It's just a different version. But yeah, I think that in terms of quality and stuff it's really it's up there and he actually does some things better like the open chest mechanism is better he's a lot more sturdy i don't feel like he's gonna fall over and it just feels really good it's a dope figure and i'm really happy to have it so huge thank you to loyal subjects for sending this out to me i really do appreciate it i'm thankful that you did because i don't know if i would have just picked this up randomly you know but i'm glad to have it now and you know i'm i'm and I'm thankful that I was able to experience the the whole thing with this figure because it was dope, man. Like, from the box, it was like, man, this box is beautiful. <laughs> Took the figure out. I'm like, man, the figure's awesome. And then I'm checking out the comic. And just, like, the whole thing is, like, fun, you know? So... Um, yeah, thank you to Loyal Subjects, and thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace.